Greetings, friend. I will show you how Brimster solved this classic Sudoku by A. Castellani by using pointing pairs. I'll show you how he solved the puzzle, but I'll also point out some areas where he could have made the solve go much quicker. Click on the link below if you want to give it a go, and with that, it's solving time. Okay, the way Brimster started out, and I don't see that many classic Sudokus on his channel, is he started doing some Snyder notation. So he saw there's only two places for one up there in block one, and then two places for two up here in block two, and then two places for two down here in block four. In case you're not familiar with Snyder notation, anytime a three by three block, you only have two places for a cannon, you put those, mark those cannons. In case you solve one of the cells, you can immediately solve the other one. And really the theme of this puzzle, and Primster didn't, probably didn't really know that, is you needed pointing pairs. And so mark and pointing pairs where you have two cannons pointing out and they can't be anywhere else in a row or a column is huge. And it's going to be the way you get to solve this puzzle. So stay tuned. I'll keep showing you those opportunities they have for these pointing pairs. So after marking those twos, he was able to actually solve for a two right here in row five, column nine, because these twos were a pointing pair. And then he had a two come across row four, only one place left for a two in block six. After that, uh, he did some more markings of ones. You notice there's only two places for a one right here. So it's another pointing pair, which limited the ones into the middle of block five in columns five and six there. Okay, after doing the ones, he was able to solve for a seven. So you saw how the sevens were coming up columns two and three, only one place left for a seven up there in block one. So he marked that seven, and then he started looking at the threes and noticed, oh, there's quite a bit of restriction up here. And so he marked two spots for a three there in block one, and then also with the nines, two spots for a nine there in block one, which makes the nines now another pointing pair. So the nines can't be anywhere else along row two, especially in these spots. So now the nines are limited in block three up to up here in row one. And after that, he comes down and he marks, uh, he's kind of looking down column one and he marks only two spots for three there in block seven. And this brings us up to our first pause the video moment, all right? There is a can here that you can solve all of them right now. You can solve it from the very beginning. And I'll give you a hint, it is the candidate eight. So pause the video and see if you can solve for all the eights in this puzzle. Well, I'll give you a few seconds. Okay, congratulations if you spotted it. And for those of you who just wanna enjoy the show, you do wanna start up here in block two. So you can solve for an eight right there in block two. And then notice how the, now these two eights cut across into block three and this eight comes up column nine. So you can solve that for an eight, which limits the eights in block six to only one spot, which with this eight down here, row four and row six, now only one spot for an eight over in block four. And then with the eights in columns one and two, and then now the two eights cutting across rows seven and eight, you can solve for the last eight right there. Congratulations, you spot that, you're getting really good solving this Sudoku. Uh, Brimster did spot this at this point, and he marked all these eights, but I want to give you the chance to find it as well. And it also reminds me, I have solved some Akash Jelani puzzles, and what I know about Akash, he is very good about picking a theme and kind of making that the highlight, uh, you know, a certain strategy will be that theme. You'll make it the highlight, and if you can find that and work your way to that theme, you'll get rewarded and be able to make progress in the puzzle. This also reminds me of a so I did an ACAST July puzzle that you probably have not seen before. So I'll put a link to that at the end. Stay tuned. You will want to check that solve out as well. After solving all the eights, Brimster now focuses on column one and look for some restrictions. It's like, oh, it's only going to be a six and a nine right there. And then right below it, it's only going to be a three and a nine. And then a four, six, nine, and a three, four, six. Uh, the other thing Brimster does is you notice is, okay, I got a four cut across row six, only two spots for a four right here. Now I'll tell you at this point, Brimster was really close to finding a shortcut that would have greatly increased the solving and had to do with figuring out where the four goes in column one. If you can figure that out, you will get to the intended pointing pair that will get you uh, to do this solve. Uh, he missed that and he started going on to different parts of this puzzle. So after doing the fours here in block four, he knows there's only two spots for four in block five and then goes, oh, this is a naked triple. Whenever you have this kind of situation, you have three candidates in one block and then three candidates in the other block and these three are empty, that is going to be, has to be a naked triple. So he notices, okay, I got a one, four, nine there. He solves for the one 
and gets rid of that mark. And the 490 actually puts there. I won't mark it just yet, but I'll come back and put that mark in later. But that helps us out with the ones because now he can make marks, Snyder marks for the ones down here in block eight. Uh, and around this time, he actually gives a shout out to Unshackling Stokely and yours truly, Smart Hobbies. He says, you know, he doesn't solve a lot of classics and he's not as good at it as Unshackling or Smart Hobbies. I thought that was really awesome. I love that shout out. Uh, but he's been pretty modest. He's a very good solver and he knows exactly how to not only solve but set great uh, variant puzzles. And I love watching his channel. But at this point, now Brimster comes to a decision point. And the question is, if you're not finding the solves, what do you do? Do you start adding more candidates, expecting a more advanced strategy? Or do you just keep looking for like the Snyder notation, these hidden naked pairs and singles? Uh, in this case, if you know... You know, this puzzle is rated hard. It's near the end of a cash It's in his book, and it's rated hard. But, you know, does hard mean New York Times hard, where you can still just use those seven strategies? Or does it mean hard like in Hudoku, where you could use anything up to a W wing to solve this? In this case, it's hard as in New York Times hard. Uh, so he didn't really need to resort to more filling out of the candidates. It's going to greatly increase your solve time. But if you do that, you know, sometimes it's pot, it's necessary because you're expecting to use some advanced strategies. You gotta have to get some of those buy value cells out there, or you won't be able to make any more solves. And so now he starts to do a lot more marking. So you're getting past nine notation, and he's marking up here in block one. So he does three, four, nine, four, nine, one, three, four, and the one four. Then he looks across row three and says, okay, I got three, four, seven, and a one, three, seven. And he actually kind of mismarks this because these ones were a pointing pair. He didn't need to put the one there, but he did. Uh, after doing that, he actually goes up and marks a three, five, seven up here. He's kind of curious if there's enough restriction right there. Uh, after marking the three, five, seven, he then says, okay, am I missing a hidden single here? And he sure is because you got a six here, six here. Six in row three and six in row one. There's only one place left for a six. So he actually does solve that six. And he's like, oh, that was available the whole time. And it was. So he could have looked for that six first before starting to do more solves. Um, and he says, and it's pretty poignant. And he says, in classic Sudoku, I struggle where to look next. Uh, and that's a good point. Because in a variant, you're going to have those variants are going to give you a clue of where to look. If you have a thermo Sudoku, if you have an era Sudoku, you have, you know, a little crop key point. The setter's telling you, you need to look here. This is where I'm putting the restriction in the puzzle, and you can follow that along. In Classic, you really got to look at the, the digits and how many you're given, and then kind of see when you solve something, what does that give you for the rest of the puzzle? Uh, and so this is the thing that Brimster missed, and it was the where do I go from here to really make some progress. And it's going to bring us up to our second pause the video moment. Okay. So pause the video and see if you can solve for a four here in column one. Well, I'll give you a few seconds. Congratulations. If you spotted this, you are an expert and realize this is the key and it involves the theme of the puzzle, a pointing pair. So if you see this four cutting across row seven and this four coming down column nine, you'll notice there's only two places for a four in block nine and that makes it a pointing pair so you can eliminate the four from right here and solve for a four in row nine column one and then you could eliminate uh since you eliminated that snyder mark for three you could solve for three right there get rid of that mark and now you can start making more solves because now you have a three in row seven and row eight so you can actually solve for a three right there uh and realize that that one should be there and this three should be there you can be solving for seven and you're going to make a lot more progress in the puzzle this is the intended solve path uh, Brimster misses that opportunity, but I wanted to point that out to you and go, if you're trying to figure out where to make progress, this is where it needs to be. So let me kind of remove some of these marks and we'll get back to our main solve. And if you're just curious about, you know, where should you look when you're solving, uh, I'm going to put a link to my single cell solving methods video. It is intended for you to kind of figure out with naked and hidden singles how to find them, where to look in the puzzle, and after you do it, where to look next. So I think you'll really enjoy that. Okay, after the six and not seeing where to go, he starts doing more markings down column seven. So you got a one, three, four there, one, three, seven, a one, three, and a one, four, seven. But he's getting kind of close now because after he does the one, four, seven, he stays and focuses in here in 
block nine. And he goes, okay, I got a one, three, five there. Ah, and then I see now with these fours, they're actually going to be a limited two spots. Okay, and then now he realizes, oh, the fours are limited two spots here in block nine. So now that's a pointing pair, and now he starts to see that solve that we we're talking about. So he's able to solve for the four in row nine, column one, uh, clean up these marks, solve for that three, and then he comes right over and solves for this one that he marked. Uh, after that, now he's going to be able to clean up some of the Snyder marking, solve for the one up here in block six, uh, remove those marks, and then he kind of notices now, you know, that he can do some solving up here in block three. So he's like, oh yeah, I got the pointing pair, even though he had this mark, he's like, oh, I got the pointing pair, I got the two ones here, I got this one in row two, there's only one place left for one up there in block three. And since he displaced the Snyder, he can solve for the nine, up there in row one, column eight. And after solving for that nine, now he comes down and says, oh yeah, I got this one. I can actually solve for the one now in block eight in row nine, column six. Then he makes some more Snyder marks in block seven. There's only two places for seven, uh, one there. Uh, and now he goes back and he says, okay, what block or column do I have some restriction? And he looks here in block six and goes, okay, it can be a three, seven or nine. Well, I see the nine coming down. So that's a three, seven, and now this is a naked pair. It means we can actually solve for a nine. Then after that nine, he marks a three, five, seven, but misses an opportunity. If he had saw these two threes, he could have just solved this for three right away and finished solving. But instead, he marked that looking just down here and not really looking at these two uh, threes. And so after doing the three, five, seven, he goes up here into row one because he's like, ah, I just don't see where I'm going. He kind of just keeps overlooking this this cell is where he needs to move next. He puts two, three, four, five there. Gets rid of the uh, candidates that can't be in those particular cells. Then he knows there's only two places for a two. So he marks those sevens. Excuse me. There's only two places in block two for seven. So he marks that. And then he starts filling out row nine. So he comes down here and starts looking at row nine. And at that point, he says, oh, I see a five, six, seven. I see a five, six. Ah, there's only one place for a three. Now he sees a three. And he should have been able to go right up here and go for the seven. Once you make a solve in classic Sudoku, always look, what does that give me? Or what am I trying to get, you know, what restriction am I trying to remove? And usually a buy value cell is a restriction you're trying to remove. So he should have went right here. He doesn't go right there, though, unfortunately. He, he comes back here to do some cleanup. He puts the sevens there um, and the, for the five, six, seven. And then he actually says, okay, well, I can actually solve for a five in here because now i got rid of this one and the three i can solve that for a five so he does get another solve in so he does a five there realizes this is a four seven naked pair pointing across cleans that up after the four seven he says okay looking row seven and again he's looking for restrictions right he's like all right you know when i got two candidates left three candidates left i'm going to make those marks and hopefully that'll lead me to another solve after that two nine um he goes up up here and says okay i'm going to fill out the rest of column eight it says okay that's a three four seven uh, again misses that opportunity to solve this for seven but he does go oh yeah this is no longer one so that's a three four three four seven three seven i can actually solve for a five there's only place left for a five up in block three so after doing that um he's able to come across here and he fills in the rest of the four seven then he comes down and goes oh there's only two spots for nine so he puts those nine snyder mark in and he's still not done he's still doing quite a bit of marking and then he comes up here in the block five. And he's like, yeah, I got these four nines, but I also got this three, five, six, seven. You see, if you miss one little detail, now you're over here just kind of guessing where to go. And if you're getting to the point where you're marking four candidates in a puzzle like this, you know you're really not hitting on the intended logic. And once he did that and realized it's only you can just remove that six, like, yeah, this isn't right. And he also admitted he hadn't been sleeping well. He had some family crisis. He's, he mentions family stress and crisis that he was dealing with. Uh, I think that kind of put him off and, and solve into his full potential. But this is a, still a great puzzle to talk about and also kind of to analyze. Uh, so just wanted to keep bringing this up. You realize, too, I'm going to have another great ACASH puzzle at the end. You want to check that out. While you're at it, subscribe to Smart Hobbies if you want to solve pointing pairs even better. Okay. After this, he now and finally, after waiting a little while, sees this cell and notices it can be a 7. And he solves that for a seven. 
super excited about that. You can see he gets a little more jiggy. He's like, yes, I'm actually going to make some progress. And since he marked two spots for a seven, he knew that he could solve for a seven in block two. Uh, and then he could solve for that five in block five. Uh, and then he removes all you know, those marks there for the threes and all those fives. Great. After doing that, he goes up to block two and he marks where the fives can be. Uh, still keeping the Snyder mark. And then he starts scanning across row four. He says, can I solve something row four? He's like, yeah, actually, I need a three, four, six, seven. I got a three and a seven right here. So this has got to be a four or six. I see the six. So that's the four and that's the six. So he solves those two cells, which allows him, this six allows him to solve these two cells because now we know that has, has to be the nine and that has to be the six. After solving for that six, uh, he fills in the naked pair to complete block four. After doing that, then he comes up and goes, oh, I got this four. That means this has to be a one. So now you can start solving up here in block one. Since that's a one, he's got the one and the four. This has to be your nine. And after he solves that nine, he actually goes one. Okay, I can solve for the one down here. And he keeps his focus down here in block seven and goes, okay, that's a two, five. But, oh, you know what? I can actually solve the rest of block seven because I see a six right here. That has to be your five, which makes this a two, and makes that a nine. So he solves all those cells right away. So solving for the nine, he cuts across row seven, says, okay, that's going to be my two, and he uses that Snyder mark to solve for another nine. After solving for that nine, then he says, you know, what's coming across row eight? Oh, it's got to be a five, so he makes that mark for the five, cleans up the Snyder marks down there, and realizes only got one spot for five since he had two markings for five up here in block two. And then he's able to solve the rest of row one. He goes, okay, so that's the five. That has to be a four because of this two. Since that's the four and that's the one, this is your three. And then this is gonna be the remaining digit, which is a two. After solving for that two, he's able to finish block two by solving for this three, which allows him to solve for the four there and the three there. Comes back and go, okay, I got three and seven. I know this has to be a four. And he's kind of able to start cleaning up a lot of these cells. That has to be a seven. This is going to have to be your four. That's going to be your seven. He comes back up here, gets your three, gets your seven right there. After solving for the seven in row four, column five, he's able to solve for the six. So he sees a three and a seven here. This has got to be your six in row six, column four. Uh, then he solves for the three in row six, column five because he knows seven six that's got to be your three after solving for that three he gets the nine in row five column six because of the four and which allows him to solve for that four uh, after getting the four then he turns attention down here for the six and seven sees there's a six right here in column four so that's got to be the six and that's got to be the seven you got two digits left uh, again you can see the twos right here and you see that the five right there so they're able to solve the five there and the two there you'll want to check out this other solving video of an ACAST Dulani puzzle that I did, but puzzle you've probably not seen before. I also have a buy me a coffee link. Click on it below in the description if you want to support this channel. I really appreciate that. I want to thank Bremster for letting me uh, feature the analysis and ACAST let me feature your puzzles on this channel. You guys are both awesome setters and I really enjoy working with you. Thank you so much for watching.